I'm sure you both are you are all familiar with these two faces, but Susan has been teaching at Union Elementary for maybe as long, okay, I won't put a number on it, but we'll say maybe as long as you guys have been riding bikes, but not as long as Mary Mello has been there. And before that, I was at Barry Town School. Right, right. So oh, I had the privilege right. of having Katie Green in my class. Oh, oh that's wow. wonderful. You probably don't know that part. I don't know that part. <laughs> that's the most important thing about Susan. So you go, wow, you do go We go way, way back. back. <laughs> that's wonderful. Susan was Vermont Teacher of the Year in 2016 which took her to high and mighty places. And you've been around the world traveling with a National Geographic Fellowship. True. So Antarctica and... Arctic. No, the Arctic. Mm. Mm. Do you Arctic. do that all the time? I you am, must do it all I the time. I help people learn right. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped okay. kindergarten. No, I can't blame it on any, anything. Arctic polar bears. Yep. Antarctic penguins. Mm. Arctic polar bears. <laughs> Perfect. If only they didn't all start with a P, it would be a lot easier. It's true. Um, <laughs> there weren't books showing them both together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been working with authors for a long time in your classroom. Um, most recently, I think Katie Farber was in Union Elementary. True. Um, so she has a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, experience working in partnership with picture book authors and others. Christy Mahali has been writing nonfiction. Um, hey there. <laughs> yeah. Join us. That was an entrance. I know. Um, <laughs> So you've been writing nonfiction articles. You've written. You've helped work on um, activity books for National Ge Geographic. Um, you'll have to fill in the blanks for me. But you had two books come out last year, Hey right. Hey Hey, uh, and we Diet for a Changing, changing Climate, climate yeah. which is nonfiction about um, nutrition, health of the climate, and how they relate to one another for young adults. Um, and there's bug eating in it. There's insect eating in it. <laughs> and it, received, it was on the long list for the Green Books. Oh, they just came green out. Green Earth Book Awards. That's Earth great. Book Both you and Katie Farber are on yep. that. That's yes. wonderful. Yep. Congratulations. Let's all leave it here. Yay. So cool. I'm just going to shut up now. Pardon? Do you have that book? Here? I don't have that book. It's okay. um, it's it's a it's, it's for unusual. the school and library market, so it's library bound, okay. and it costs thirty seven bucks. Oh, okay. We are happy Not to order it for me you. Happy, but I'm happy yes. to okay, show it to you. Yeah. So I'm going to get out of the way and let you two do your thing. Thank you Thanks, so much Jane. for committing to come back. Thanks for having us. And thank you guys for coming. This is such a nice group. We're excited. If you don't know us that well. <laughs> this is me. Oh, oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> there is a camera. For, for, uh, yes, and we are being recorded. <laughs> Just so you know. Just thought you could just edit soon. out Grace if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, anything she says. Anybody? Oh, oh I wouldn't one. dare. Oh, okay. yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. They're delicious. Thank oh, you. Okay. So, I don't <laughs> so we <laughs> thought it, we're, we're so glad you came today. We thought it would be good to start off with like a full disclosure that we have been together in a readers club, a book club here in town, book group. Reading, yeah. For about 18 years. Oh, and um, we have met monthly for 18 years to talk about books and so that started our relationship as friends mm -hmm. and then um and book lovers and book lovers and as chris started moving along and started doing some of her writing we started to develop this working relationship as well and so we thought it would be really fun to share a little bit about how that's been going and share some ideas that have worked really well for us right right and um I, I think you might know everyone here, but I don't know quite everyone yeah. here. And I know we have a we writer. We each other. So. Okay. Right. So, so maybe if we can just get a sense of what angle everyone comes from. I think they're all different, which is really mm -hmm. fun. Um, that would be helpful to us and maybe everybody. And we're hoping that it's, especially with a group this size, that it can be a, a back and forth conversation. Because we have some ideas, um, and I know you'll have lots of ideas also as we go along. So, I think we heard a little bit about you that you're at UVM, right? Yeah, I work with the pre-service teachers, okay. and um, we currently spend a lot of time, uh, the licensure category is first through third grade, and um, I tend to um, get them when they move out to the public schools mm -hmm. in the K-3 context. So, and I'm just a lover of children's books. Great. And okay. it was, it's interesting because I have one student teacher right now, and she's at Allen Brook, and she's um, doing this little... Um, little project on Vermont authors and then 
<clears throat> um, I, I, she teaches in, she's in kindergarten. And then I happened to be down here and I saw this poster and I'm like the whole thing just kind of clicked for me. So I drove down. Awesome. Terrific. Thanks for coming. Um, so I work at Candlewick Press. Wonderful. I've worked there 22 years. I'm the editorial director, or one of them. Um, so I work on picture books, uh, up really for babies up through young adult fiction and nonfiction. I do work with several um, Vermont authors, like Tobin Anderson, somebody I've worked with the whole time I've been at Candlewick. So Terrific. when we started working together, he was 29 and I was 39. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's 51 and I'm 61. So that's been sort of a long, long Vermont connection. Um, I've always wanted to move to Vermont um, because Amy Ehrlich, who was my predecessor at Candlewick, lived up here and I used to come visit her and think, oh, this would be so perfect. I could work from home. So finally, 22 years later, I'm actually doing that. So I have a house in Huntington. <coughs> nice. And this is my dear friend, Grace Green, who you all know. Oh, no, I don't, I don't know. Oh, all right. And what is your name? Liz. Oh. <laughs> Liz yeah. Bicknell. She did go on for quite a while okay. with us. <laughs> <laughs> we got Susan. And Susan, yes. So. yes. Okay. And I'm Grace, Grace Green. <clears throat> um, I used to be the youth services consultant for the Vermont Department of Libraries. So I used, I used to do a lot of things. Now I'm just retired and, <laughs> and hang out. But <laughs> well, I'm and, sure and paint. sit around. One of the programs that I liked to do was how to treat an author properly, mm -hmm. um, and because it just drives me crazy mm -hmm. when authors are mistreated or worse still, um, just people are not prepared at all. So right. I would collect stories from authors about horrible experiences they had. At <laughs> schools and libraries? At Both? schools and yeah. libraries. When doing their visits. When doing their visits. Oh yeah, no, I didn't get into their personal lives. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whole other thing. <laughs> they can be badly treated. But, but as Susan said, the, my claim to fame is that my daughter was in her class <laughs> in the first and second grade at Berrytown. And she's a kindergarten teacher. I, she graduated from the LA program. She right? did. Yes, she, she did. did. Yes, oh she did. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Because I remember that. Because I, I met you. I've, I know you. You're, you're a legend. And I've you, met you. You know me? She yeah, is I, a legend. Yes. <laughs> I, I came in. I had I interviewed you once. I just wanted to learn. All oh, about did you? you yeah. Oh, but that's okay. And, and I was think I, I nice knew about you? your daughter. Oh, you're of course. Okay, good. And yeah, my daughter's a kindergarten where? teacher at, at uh, Saint Monica's, Saint Michael's, oh, cool. and Barry. Oh, wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And also the Red Clover program. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We well the Department of Libraries. Also. <laughs> <laughs> well, whose program is this? The, the Department of Libraries <laughs> runs all three of the Children's Choice Awards. Children's Book Choice Awards in, in mm -hmm. Vermont, and the Red Clover one is the. Do you know them? That oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The Red mm -hmm. Clover one is the picture book one, so mm -hmm. near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. All of us, I think. All right. Well, it's about that I got the, the trivia question at Chittenden or at uh, People's United correct yesterday. They were asking about the state flower, and Red oh. Clover was on. Oh, like, oh, oh, I think I'm gonna go. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's wonderful. <laughs> I think every Vermont. Child will get that yeah. question correct because it's so oh, instrumental. And how about schools. Vermont being the one state that passed the oh. citizenship test? Did you see that I in the paper it. yesterday? Yeah. No. So the who is it? Eisenhower Institute or some institute um, gave uh, some hundreds of people in every state questions from the United States citizenship test. Yeah. One state. The majority of people passed, mm -hmm. and it, it was, was our Vermont. state. <laughs> I mean, that's great, but it's scary too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And our rate was sixty-five percent. Sixty-five percent. Wow. Got and we were the uh, highest. Passed the test, yeah. right? Yeah. Could yeah. that say something about the lack of first-degree immigrants in Vermont? I mean, first-generation immigrants in Vermont. No. And there's re no. No. Somebody fought that, and yes. it was, it's in the Free Press. There's an article in the Free okay. Press, but the, it, somebody fought that, and they talked about how. Um, that wasn't necessarily It was the case. probably the reverse, <laughs> in fact. That yeah, they, the they the people who have just taken and passed the well, test no, are the ones that are more right, likely right, to know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah, good. Anyway. Also in the, in the paper yesterday that Ralph Ellison wrote um, while Invisible in Man and While in Vermont. I didn't know that, I didn't know that either. Yes. I'm learning yeah. so much. Yeah. So so they they We're so glad you came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends in the Mad River Valley. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Oh, so can oh, yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> also, you didn't say who you yeah. are. That's She's right. I I was so my fault. I'm Carolyn Corsco-Petoni. I'm also a children's book author, and I got to do this. So um yeah, I got to do a visit with Susan. It was really great and I really enjoyed it. You live in Montpelier? I do live in Montpelier. You know, when I had that job I knew every single children's book author yeah. and now I am so far beyond. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Caroline and not only met with my class, she met with all 80 first graders. Oh, did you? <laughs> so yeah. oh, that's I have great. to just note that that's it, an accomplishment. It was <laughs> great. And I'm also doing, uh, I, I do presentations for the Children's Literacy Foundation, so uh -huh. um, that's been fun, too, mm -hmm. getting yeah. out and getting into different areas, mm -hmm. not just around right. there. Right. So. I used to be on that yeah. board when I was somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're still somebody. <laughs> Pain in the neck. <laughs> So we want this workshop to work for you guys today. So we have some things that we have, you know, gathered and we wanted to talk about. But if there are other things, don't hesitate to speak up and ask or let us know or, you know, let us know if we're mistreating authors because we <laughs> don't want to be doing that. We wouldn't be doing that. Right. Yeah. The idea is to help educators know how not to mistreat authors mm -hmm. and how to make a school visit as productive as it can be. And we're not mostly talking about the traditional school visits where an author comes and presents to a whole school in the auditorium and has a whole sort of presentation. We're more going to talk about what we've been doing, which is at a classroom level, developing sort of a long-term relationship between one writer and one classroom, nice. which I really love. Um, and obviously, I, I'm well aware that there are many writers who make a lot of their income doing the big visits, and I don't want to undercut that at all. I think a lot of what we talk about can make the big visits better also. But I didn't feel comfortable with that level yet. I'm a pretty new picture book writer, although I had written school and library books for a few years. Um, and I just love um, the way we've put together uh, a learning experience that I get a lot out of as well as the, the kids getting a lot out of. So that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we started off, Chris actually thought I was doing her a favor. <laughs> when I she first she was asked doing me, me a favor. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she said, well, do you want to come and, and uh, read to my class? And at this point, I didn't, my picture book wasn't out, so I had educational books out. This mm. was my, my first book that came out. And um, I thought she was honestly doing this as an act of charity to me because um, it was such a, a, a great chance for me to go and talk to a small and manageable group of first graders with a teacher that I already knew and liked. And um, I didn't realize until later <laughs> that you were doing it for your own, you know, you thought it would be good for you. It was advantageous to me. To <laughs> And so um, at our school, we, we use the Lucy Calkins uh, reading, and, reading mm -hmm. workshop and writing workshop as a sort of a template for how to um, go through the year and which teaching points to hit. And so one of the um, common core standards for writers in, who are in first grade is to learn how to write nonfiction. And it's presented as how-to books or teaching books. And so... Um, you know, we, we kind of were starting this unit, and um, the kids were kind of just like writing what they thought, like how to take care of a cat, you know, like you need to get a cat, and then you <laughs> feed it, and then you pet it, and you take care of it. It was very, very basic, and they weren't really understanding that, t that they would need to maybe do some research or maybe do some learning in order to be better writers. And so I was, that's when I invited Chris to come in and talk about um, writing some nonfiction, and mm -hmm. she did this great thing where she brought a whole bunch of how-to books in for examples and I know it sounds really simple like I should have thought of that but it had, <laughs> had not occurred to me and she brought um, I went to the library yeah she went to the Kellogg mm -hmm. cupboard and came with a stack of how-to books mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites was how to read to a slug how to read to a snail or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um, but they all you know followed the format of how to do something and so that was really um, really inspiring. These are some of the anchor charts that come, that we use with the program just to give people an idea um, of um, each day you sort of have 
some teaching points that you present to the kids. And then that's the little mini lesson. And because they're six, the mini lesson is about six minutes. <laughs> and then they go off and write. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, this year, in particular, Chris and I really focused hard on some of the um, actual teaching points. Right. So this is one of the, mm -hmm. of the key um, uh, words of wisdom that Susie has for educators in doing this is that you it works best if you bring a writer in to talk about a specific point that the class is is learning at that point so <laughs> Susie said we're doing nonfiction writing right now and we're having a really hard time figuring out how to do the table of contents and so she said can you come in and help us with the table of contents so I said Absolutely, that sounds like fun, right? <laughs> and so I brought in um, some books that had interesting tables of contents, and you know, one of them was my books, and um, we uh, we we had a little mini lesson. I gave a mini lesson. It's like, I don't know. but it was yeah. fun. Yeah, and it was really fun. And um, you know, it's the thing that I hadn't sort of hashed out, and Chris helped with is use the way it's introduced is sort of they write a whole book, then they go back and make the table of contents, mm -hmm. which. Publishers, you know, but um, six year olds and myself, I kind of didn't really think that through. And so, um, Chris had come when kids had some content already written, and then they were going back and trying to think about how they organized it and what the headers were. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I do have some published books. Um, these, this is what a published book looks like nice. it's got some fancy binding. These are close to publication. Yeah, these are, <laughs> those are the F and G's. <laughs> yeah. yes. these are the F and G's, apparently. Um, and I I talked to the kids about sharing their work today, and they asked me to ask you to be quite careful with their with their work. Oh. <laughs> you can share it, but ask them to be very careful. Oh. Um, but as you can see, um, let's see. This is um, let's see if this one. So this was before Chris came. We had each published one book without a table of contents. So this was learning about Power Rangers, uh -huh. and um, this one was San Francisco, which you had just. Um, visited so that was fun so it was sort of like they were writing information and doing research um, but they didn't have headers and they didn't have an organized mm. um, pattern but then um, we did get some organization going and I'm trying mm. to find the one about pets because that was oh the pets one the pets mm -hmm. one um, so this was how to have a pet and it's mm -hmm. close to publication <laughs> and um, she has what you need pets like and what kinds of pets mm -hmm. for her table of contents. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so then she's had got some headers up here. Um, and so when when Chris came, it helped us with that, and then we decided we needed a second visit because mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks later, the task was to work on introductions and conclusions, mm -hmm. which is super hard when you're six to write. Yeah, it. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this you can one talk about it, but you can't write about it as much. So That's this true. one we really wanted to. Um, I wish we had documented more because when Chris first came, this student had. Did you ever want a pet in your life? That was her introduction. Mm. Really pretty snazzy. Yeah. Very good. And you, you, you liked it. I mean, we, you, we liked it yeah. very much. Um, but we had that time, Chris was able to come and we divided the kids into small groups and she was really able to get them to elaborate more on their introductions. So we ended up with, did you ever want a pet in your life? Look in this book and you will learn about pets. Mm. <laughs> Which is a, it's good. For, for, for first grade, that's yeah. quite an introduction. Um, and so we really mm -hmm. spent some time working on introductions. This, um, this is the one that she wanted me to share with you that oh, you never got to see, okay. all about the continents. Mm. Oh, wow. the this is one. a book about the continents. Did you ever want to learn about them? Read this book to find out, and you will see what you can learn. <laughs> 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 but, right, the big idea is there. Right. Like, it's coming. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. this is a um, mm -hmm. student who struggles a little more with his writing, all about snakes. And his table of contents was, um, how do snakes move packs and dens? And um, his <laughs> introduction is my absolute favorite. Do snakes freak you out? Read my book. <laughs> he's got style. <laughs> exactly. And he's got the voice going. Yeah, so um, this was after 
we had a couple of sessions together. And um, one of the things, and I'll let you talk about this a little bit because this is okay. kind of a magical time. One of the things Chris did when she came. Well, yeah, I didn't realize how, how well this would go over, but as I was preparing to talk about introductions, I went through my collection. I did not write this one, but I brought it in because um, it has a, um, a nice introduction, and I explained what the introduction, but the, this introduction talks about how you use this book and what's in this book, mm. and so I used that to illustrate uh, the concept, and I offered to leave the book for the class. Well, it turns <laughs> out that the class really likes this book, which I didn't think was written for first graders, mm. but they just apparently are pouring over it, and talking about the design of it mm -hmm. and talking somebody looked at the table of contents and said oh my goodness this is the longest mm -hmm. table of contents on the planet right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i couldn't find it yesterday of course i wanted to bring it to show you and it was squirreled away in someone's desk so <laughs> <laughs> i finally found it um, but yeah, sort of broadening horizons and talking concretely about here's why you want an introduction in a book. And that was helpful to them to think about um, at the level of, you know, first grade books. So um, they, I love my visits with this classroom because the kids are so engaged and excited. I mean, they have a really outstanding teacher in the first place. Um, but to have an outside person who's a real author um, is is kind of a, a, a special a special thing for them and, um, and and I learn a ton about how kids think and what kids um, you know react to positively and and all those things which are terrifically important to me as a writer for this age group yeah, and the magic, I think the magic of the co-teaching model is there, you know, the magic of great teaching is presenting information in a lot of different ways because you never know who's going to mm. take in what. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I, I did want to share one of the uh, funny stories. The first time Chris came and met this year's class, I had just kept saying we're going to have an author visit, an author's coming to visit. Um, and Chris walked in the door and he turns to me and said, I thought it was going to be a man. Mm. Oh, wow. And I, yeah. I thought... How, like my mind is like oh, what have I done like why is he thinking this and I said well why did you think that and he's like well it's probably because I'm a boy <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm an author and so I was just thinking it would be a oh, man right. and I was like okay Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it also you had said Chris and Chris? I hadn't oh, said your no. name. Oh, I hadn't oh, used okay. your name. I just kept okay. saying author, right. author. Um, Interesting. But I got a little worried and then I when he said just probably because I'm a boy. I thought, okay. That makes me feel a little bit Yeah, better. that's that's an okay uh -huh. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it, it's been um, it's been really interesting to explore that concept. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the the point of sharing this work is like the advanced planning that goes in, and yes. that's we all know that's mm. what good teaching entails. But um, I think the first couple times that we met, we didn't do that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it was sort of like come on and read, and then. <laughs> Chris read, and then it was sort of what do we do next? Um, mm -hmm. But really tying it into something and tying it into something that we're already doing, like so that it's not an add-on. I think a lot of teachers are feeling overwhelmed in yeah. general, mm -hmm. um, and really being able to tie this to our curriculum and the Common Core and um, best practice and what kids need is is the crucial element. And I think helping to spread that message right. to educators. So it's not an point. interruption, it's not right. time out of the lesson plan, it's not a lost day, it's um, in reinforcing and moving on with yeah. your uh, work with like an extra helper, an extra set of hands. Um, and from the writer's perspective, so much better than sort of showing up and nobody knows what you're doing and nobody's read your book and nobody is necessarily prepared and possibly not paying very much attention. Um, these are some of the stories I've heard. Um, this is a really um, sort of uh, easy uh, way to get really deeply engaged with uh, a classroom full of readers and writers. And, so. and I think there's, it's powerful, like a, a lot of times, I would say probably every day, there's a reference to Remember in Chris's Moose book, 
how she had a diagram of a mm. life cycle. That comes up almost every day because mm -hmm. well, Chris talked about how in nonfiction often mm -hmm. um, there's a life cycle. So they're very into when we're sort talking of about animals, adding this when we're talking about animals. A lot animals of your books were about animals. Yeah. So we were talking about um, uh, uh, the table of contents and the chapter headings too, and everyone liked moose reproduce because mm. that was it. And so that's and, uh, where we have the life cycle. <laughs> that's where we have the life cycle diagram, and everyone just really, um, you know, remembered that, and they started writing life cycles yeah. in their in their books about animals. So that was that was fun for everybody, and just kind of the different uh, text features too. You know, it's it's really mm -hmm. great to have it, but but it comes up. Chris comes up a lot, like in discussions and in mini lessons, um, and so that's really valuable, you know, to, to, kn to know an author and to have something as a reference point, I think is really enriching their experience as learners. Well, and a writer is a real person. A real person can be a writer is, is this lesson that I didn't get until I was already a writer. You know, writers were like yeah. up there somewhere uh, for me. Yeah. Um, and so these kids, like, people write. And that's a really valuable lesson, I think. And Chris doesn't even know this, but she worked with a small group at the table, and she did not get to work with everyone, so they're hoping that maybe she can come back and work with them at the table, too. It was okay. kind of a special treat to work there. <laughs> okay, now the pressure's on. Yeah, and so um, oh, the classroom visits, you know, are, are really valuable. But there are also some other models that we've used. Um, when Carolyn came, we actually we put that up. Sure, yeah. Um, Carolyn, we had 80 children, and yeah. so at that point, um, we were looking at <coughs> craft moves that, that authors take. So um, nice. the curriculum, as you know, like a healthy curriculum is sort of spiraling around, and so we're moving from uh, narratives to nonfiction to back to narratives, making them a little more complex back to um, information books again. But um, at this point in the year, um, and I'm sorry the poster's so raggedy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so it's so it's so rare. Rare. Um, it says, Learning craft we moves learning from a mentor author. Yeah, so um, we, why, this was kind of an interesting one because Carolyn was doing one of those sort of bigger presentations. She was reading her her book and um, the kids were doing an activity but as she was reading we were kind of noticing some of the things in the story and um, we were um, pulling them out and then hopefully kids were emulating this in their writing and it, it really mm -hmm. happened especially ellipsis um, <laughs> good <laughs> lord <laughs> but there are ellipses and in, in this book there's some great examples of um, that and it was really fun to hear you talk about some of the choices weren't actually yours in terms of the text features or the um, craft moves um, and some of them were um, but that was kind of the special part about hearing you read and talk about it and so in that scenario um, we had to move to the Kellogg Lubbard Kellogg Hubbard to uh, fit everybody in, and there was also the story walk. So that mm -hmm. was sort of a multidisciplinary approach to um, to learning craft moves. But again, it was sort of this reference point later on to go back to. Well, I'm using an ellipse, or I did have a student um, who used alliteration and really kept talking about the bumpy, brittle brown stick. Um, oh. And so um, it, it's really, I think, powerful to have these real examples. Um, and it was super great to have um, Susie. Um, oh, that's not me. Okay. <laughs> to to not have uh, Susie. <laughs> not me, is it? Being able to, ca to capture things as you. you're going along <laughs> and you're talking about it, and the kids are. It really helped because when I would say something. Or, or if you would even lead us in a different sort of direction, it was already right up there for the kids to see and refer right. to and remember. And so, it wasn't yeah. like, so the reading, I think we read it through once, and then and we, we went back and kind of dissected it a little bit, which was really helpful because, you know, I would ask the kids to, what are you noticing here? And somebody would usually, and, and yeah. you were, were very adept at <coughs> getting the right people, getting everybody to have a yeah. chance to speak. And they we had read. To. You know, the teachers, I think, probably each had read the book maybe three or four times yeah. already, so they sure. had seen 
capitals or mm. exclamation marks or ellipses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they really love ellipses. They just love it. It's like, a, I don't know if it's developmental or what it is, but they love ellipses. Well, it was a cool new thing, right? Yeah. Right. And, and it's yeah. built suspense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what life yeah. is about. I yeah. Think, yeah. So. Fabulous. Um, yeah, and I think that um, okay. I think it was really helpful to hear. Like we had read it three or four times, but to have you read mm -hmm. was different, right? Like as a reader, you can think about phrasing, but when oh God, somebody needs you, Grace. Need <laughs> but having you read it was really was yeah. really special. So we appreciate that time that you took to meet with us. Well, it was really fun. Well, it was is fun, it like isn't working it? with the, with that many children. Well, it, it was it, she it was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, I, I did definitely two sessions of forty. Okay, because okay. eighty was because yeah. eighty sounds. I would <laughs> I, I I I think I would have been terrified if I yeah. didn't have. <laughs> well, there were like four teachers there too. Yes, so it wasn't okay. and so, <laughs> so so there was there was definitely the the right level of support. Yeah. Um, the I had done you know we had met before yeah. we had, we had I sort of brainstormed an outline already of what we we were going to do so I sort of knew what you know wasn't like my typical author presentation but it was you know sort of had some of those elements and then you know with all the support it was it was great and when mm -hmm. the uh, afterward there was a craft to make a um, like a puppet mm -hmm. and yeah. you could have the feelings these little symbols for feelings and then mm -hmm. there was the story walk so the kid they could make a craft and then go outside and read the story I on the posts yeah. so it was there were a lot of options which well the always story helps. is about <laughs> a walk in the woods so mm. the story walk was a natural that was right. my that was my launch you know when I did the book launch that was the and that's it, why your publisher yeah came up with that exactly idea, I think that's right? why my publisher made the story walk was because it was for the lamp for the launch but I've also had it up on the state house lawn and you mm. know just it's a nice thing to have yeah. and I don't know if you remember that year but we actually um, had a student that shared the name of the main character oh yes that's so right that was super which kind was of odd special it's not a very yeah common Mika. Name. and um, mm. so that was just kind of like everyone was like you know how they do that I know Mika <laughs> <laughs> But there's that connection part that's yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was that was kind of special that you yeah. chose that.